Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Learn with Sir Glenn and for this video, we're going to discuss circles and related terms. So, let's go! A circle is a set of all points on a plane which are equidistant to a given point called the center. Center or center of a circle is the point in a circle from which all the distances to the points on the circle are equal. So let's have this one as our circle. Then the center is your point A. So let's have point B on our circle and point C on the circle. So by definition of circle, the distance between AB and the distance between AC are the same. So, we can have point A is the center of a given circle, then the distance of point B, which is point on the circle, from point A, which is the center, and the distance of point C, which is point on the circle, and point A are equal. That is based on the definition of the circle. So now, Circles are named according to the center. So, since the center of the given circle is point A, then the circle is called circle A or or we use this symbol to represent circle so circle A so this is circle A so we do this to differentiate circles from other given circles so let's have another circle here and let's say the center of the circle is point D then you name this one as circle D so now we have differentiation of the two circles we have circle A and circle D Now let's have the related terms to circle. So the first one is radius. So the plural form is radii. A segment drawn from center to any point on a circle and it is denoted by letter R. So the radius is the distance between the center to any point on the circle. So let's have this circle with center point A. So this is circle A. On circle A, let's have point B which is a point on our circle. If you draw a segment joining point A and point B, then you will have a radius. So therefore, we can say that segment AB is the radius of circle A. So let's have another example. Let's have point C, which is also a point on our circle. Then if you're going to join point A and C with a segment, then that segment is called a radius. So we can also say that segment AC is also a radius of circle A. Okay, so let's have another term. This time, it's chord. So, chord is a segment drawn from any two distinct points on the circle. So, let's have this circle with center point A. So, this is circle A. And let's have point B, a point on a circle, and point C, which is another point on a circle. If you draw a segment joining point B and point C, uh, then you will form a chord. Then, therefore, we can say that segment BC is a chord of circle A. So let's have another example. So let's say we have another point. This time, it's point D, which is also on circle A. So if I connect point C and point D, I will form a segment, which is also an example of chord. So therefore, segment CD is a chord of circle A. Okay, so let's have the next diameter. A diameter is a chord that passes through the center. It is denoted by letter D and it is considered as the longest chord of your circle. So let's have circle with center point A. So this is circle A. And let's have point B, a point on the circle A. And point C is also a point on circle A. If you draw a segment joining point B and point C passing through the center A, then you will form a diameter. So therefore, on this figure, we can say that segment BC is a diameter of circle A. Now let's have arc of a circle. So an arc of a circle is a portion or part of a circle. Then this symbol is used to name an arc of a circle. So an arc of a circle is composed of two distinct points on a circle and all the points on the circle between these points. So let's have circle with center point A. So let's have circle A. If you have point B, which is on the circle, and point C, which is also on the circle, 
then if we're going to take point B and point C and all the points between point B and point C on the circle, you will form an arc. So therefore, on this figure, we can say that arc BC is an arc of circle A. Then we have semicircle. A semicircle is a half of a circle. So it is an arc with measure 180 degrees. And a diameter will make two semicircles. So let's have the circle with center A and this is circle A. So if you're going to have point B and point C forming a diameter of your circle A, then you're going to divide circle A into two semicircles. So the first semicircle is the upper part of your circle. So therefore, arc BC is an example of semicircle of circle A. And the other semicircle is the lower part of your circle A. And since if you're going to name it, it will also compose of letters B and C. So to differentiate it from the first semicircle, semicircle BC, we can use a point on that semicircle. So let's sub point D. So therefore, we can name the other semicircle as arc BDC as the other semicircle of circle A. Now let's have minor arc. So the minor arc is an arc which is smaller than semicircle. So it is an arc with measure less than 180 degrees. So let's have this circle with center point A. So this is circle A. So if you have point B and point C form an arc, if this arc is smaller than semicircle or if the arc measures less than 180 degrees, then it is an example of minor arc. So since arc BC is smaller than semicircle, then arc BC is an example of minor arc. So therefore, we can say arc BC is a minor arc of circle A. So now let's have major arc. It is an arc which is bigger than semicircle. And the measure of this arc is greater than 180 degrees. So let's have the circle with center A. So this is circle A. So let's have point B and point C form a diameter. So if we're going to have point D on our circle, then the arc formed by arc BCD is greater than semicircle. So therefore, it's an example of major arc. So therefore, on our circle, we can say that arc BCD is an example of major arc of circle A since it is greater than 180 degree or bigger than a semicircle. Okay, so let's now have the last term for this lesson, central angle. So, central angle is an angle formed by two distinct radii. So, this symbol is used to name an angle. The sides of the central angle are the radii and the vertex is the center. So, let's have this circle with center point A. So, this is circle A. On circle A, let's sub point B a point on a circle, and point C is also a point on a circle. If I connect point B and point A, I will form a radius. Then if I connect point C and point A, I will form another radius. And notice that if you have two distinct radii on your circle, you will form an angle, and that angle is your central angle. So therefore, we can say that angle BAC or angle A is a central angle of circle A since it is composed of two radii and the vertex is at the center of your circle. Okay, so that's it. We're done. Thank you for watching and hope you have learned something from this video.